Have you ever considered the possibility that time as we understand it may not exist at all? An intriguing thought, isn't it? For centuries, humans have perceived time as a linear progression. We divide it into past, present, and future and order our lives around it. But what if our perception is merely an illusion? Time in its essence is an enigma, a puzzle that has baffled the greatest minds throughout history. We accept its existence and influence, measuring our lives in hours, days, and years. But what if this familiar concept is not an inherent aspect of reality, but something far more complex and elusive? What if time, as we know it, is a construct of our minds, a product of our consciousness trying to make sense of the world? These are the existential quandaries we will explore. So buckle up and join us as we delve into the fascinating concept that time indeed might not exist. How do we perceive time? Is it as straightforward as it seems? These questions invite us into a fascinating exploration of our relationship with time. Humans, it seems, have a unique perception of time. It's not a fixed entity, but rather a fluid concept that bends and stretches according to our mental state and circumstances. For instance, have you ever noticed how time seems to crawl when you're waiting for something eagerly? A minute feels like an hour, an hour like an eternity. This phenomenon known as time dilation is a testament to the psychological nature of time perception. On the other hand, when we're engrossed in something we love, time seems to fly. We lose ourselves in the moment, and before we know it, hours have passed. This is what psychologists call flow state, a state of heightened focus and immersion where time becomes irrelevant. Age also plays a significant role in our perception of time. As children, our world is filled with new experiences and discoveries, making time seem to stretch out indefinitely. But as we age, our routines become more predictable and time seems to speed up. It's as if our brain is fast forwarding through the familiar scenes, making our perception of time more condensed. It's also fascinating to note that different cultures perceive time differently. Some cultures see time as a linear progression, moving from past to future. Others view time cyclically, where events and experiences recur in a circular pattern. These cultural differences further underscore the notion that our perception of time is a construct shaped by our minds and societies rather than an immutable physical law. So what does all this mean? Well, it suggests that time is not as concrete and objective as we might think. It's more of a psychological construct, a product of our consciousness. It's a tool our brains use to make sense of our experiences and to navigate the world around us. This subjective perception of time hints at its non-physical nature. And that opens up a whole new world of possibilities for understanding what time truly is. And let's examine time from a physicist's perspective. In the realm of physics, time takes on a role that's quite distinct from our everyday understanding of it. Here, time becomes a dimension, just like the three dimensions of space we're familiar with, length, width, and height. This fourth dimension is a fundamental part of the theory of relativity introduced by Albert Einstein. In this theory, space and time are woven together into a single entity known as space-time. It's a four-dimensional fabric of the universe where everything that happens happens within it. But unlike our familiar three dimensions of space, time has a unique characteristic. It has a direction. We move forward in time from past to future, making it distinct from space. Now here's where things get really interesting. Time, according to relativity, is not a fixed background against which events play out. Instead, it is malleable and can be affected by factors like gravity and speed. This is illustrated by the famous twin paradox, where one twin travels at near light speed while the other stays on Earth. Upon return, the traveling twin would be younger than the one who stayed put. This is not a trick or an illusion, but a real effect of time dilation, as predicted by Einstein's theory. So if time can be stretched and squeezed by gravity and speed, it becomes much less of an absolute entity. Instead, it becomes dependent on the observer's frame of reference. What may seem like a second to you might feel like a minute to someone else, depending on their relative velocity and position in a gravitational field. This understanding presents a picture of time that's far removed from our everyday experiences. It's a concept that is both fascinating and challenging, forcing us to rethink our basic understanding of reality. From a physical standpoint, time is not as constant or universal as it may appear. Oh, now let's explore how philosophers view time. 
As we delve into the realm of philosophy, time takes on myriad forms, each one challenging our conventional understanding. Picture this, what if only the present exists? This is the concept of presentism. Under this view, the past is gone, the future is yet to come, and only the present moment is real. It's like being on a train where the tracks behind disappear as soon as they're passed and the ones ahead materialize only as they're reached. Now consider a contrasting view, eternalism. This theory posits that the past, present, and future all exist simultaneously. Imagine a river with its entire course visible from source to sea. Each point on the river, from its bubbling origin to its expansive end, exists together. That's how eternalism views time. Your first day at school, this very moment, your future self, they're all equally real, just located at different points in time. But wait, let's not overlook the growing block theory. This theory suggests that the past and present exist, but the future does not. It's like a sculpture being chiseled out of a block of marble. The finished parts represent the past and present, while the untouched marble represents an undefined future. These theories, as you can see, are more than just intellectual gymnastics. They pose essential questions about the nature of reality. Is time a relentless river carrying us from the past to the future, or is it more like a vast ocean where past, present, and future coexist? And let's not forget, these theories have implications for how we live our lives. If presentism is true, then we should live in the moment, for that's all there is. If eternalism is right, then every moment of our lives is forever etched in the fabric of time. Philosophically, time is a complex and nebulous concept, far from the simple ticking of a clock. So, does time truly exist? In the preceding scenes, we've unraveled the enigma of time, explored the human perception of it, delved into its role in physics, and contemplated its philosophical implications. Now we arrive at the crux of our discussion, the question of whether time, as we understand it, truly exists. Let's first recapitulate. We've established that our experience of time is subjective, prone to the whims and vagaries of our individual perceptions. A minute might seem like an eternity when we're waiting in a queue, but pass in the blink of an eye when we're engrossed in a riveting novel. In the realm of physics, time is treated as a dimension, intricately woven into the fabric of the universe. Yet, the laws of physics remain unaltered when time is reversed, hinting that time might not be as fundamental as we'd like to believe. Philosophically, time has been contemplated as an illusion, a product of our consciousness seeking order in the chaos of existence. The past and the future are concepts, constructs of our minds, existing nowhere but in our thoughts. Combining these threads of argument, we might be led to an audacious conclusion that time, as we understand it, does not exist. It could be merely a construct of human perception, a tool we've devised to make sense of our world. Does this mean our clocks are meaningless? Our calendars redundant? Not at all. Even if time is a construct, it's a vital one. It structures our lives, allows us to plan, to anticipate, to reminisce. But it's important to remember that this construct might not reflect a fundamental aspect of reality. We're treading on the edge of understanding, grappling with ideas that challenge our deeply ingrained notions. And while these speculations might be unsettling, they also open up a world of fascinating possibilities. Our understanding of time might be nothing more than an illusion, a fabrication of the human mind. So we've journeyed through physics, philosophy, and human perception to question the existence of time. We've delved into how our minds perceive time, flowing seamlessly from past to present to future. We've unraveled the ways physics, both classical and quantum, grapples with the concept of time, often pushing it to the periphery of equations and theories. We've contemplated the philosophical perspectives that challenge the reality of time, proposing that it might merely be a human construct. But the real crux of our exploration lies in the bold proposition that time, as we understand it, might not exist. Far from being an absolute universal reality, time could be an illusion, a figment of our collective consciousness designed to make sense of our world. So as we close this thought-provoking journey, I urge you to keep pondering about the nature of time. And remember, it might be just an illusion. Until next time, keep questioning, 